Hey, it's Tim. Pickup truck plus SUV talk. Yes, it's your favorite guy on the internet. So uh, live on YouTube, you haven't done this before. I'm trying to get a little closer because it always gives me a weird complexion issue. Um, this I do live streams uh, once a week when I'm in town, when things are going right. And uh, we talk about the truck or we're inside talking about truck stuff or whatever. It's kind of about you. It's about you, the viewer. So um, I always feel like it's weird because... I gotta look this way and the camera's that way. So I'm gonna do my best. But I'm in a 2020. Uh yeah, there we go. Ford Expedition. Sorry, I've never really driven one of these. <laughs> I'm like, I've done a bunch of research. I have a bunch of paperwork I've been looking at trying to figure out what the heck this thing is. So it's a three-row, da da da. Three-row uh full size SUV competes with the uh, suburban Tahoe, Yukon kind of stuff, uh Yukon XL, that kind of thing. This comes with a max package, which is the Suburban, so you got extra room in the back. Uh, EcoBoost engine, 3.5 liter, 10-speed transmission, and uh, yeah, lots of stuff. So I figure I will take and show you guys the uh, interior and exterior, and it looks like people are leaving. Maybe not interested in this uh, vehicle, but yeah, let's do it anyways. So let me flip this around. All right, so here we go. This is the interior of the Ford Expedition. I have uh, controls here. I have the... Uh, advanced, this is Adaptive Cruise, by the way. There's a package for that, which is right there. And it's, uh, let's see, it's Ford Copilot 360 Assist, voice activated touchscreen, nav system, panoramic vista roof, that all comes in there. And that's actually new for this year. I have major product changes. New would be the auto high beams, the blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, pre collision assist, and then available in limited and now new King Ranch and Platinum. King Ranch is new. Adaptive cruise control, stop and go, voice activated touchscreen. So, yeah, there's that kind of stuff going on. Rain sensing wipers are not available. They're standard unlimited. So, I have, I have rain sensing wipers. We'll get the price in a minute. Anyways, uh, I drove the Torrington. That's kind of what my fuel economy was. I do the 10 speed. Hey, Juan, I have uh, mild, empty, turbo kind of stuff going on. Hey, Dwayne, how you doing? I have the. Uh, this is interesting here. I have the lock and unlocker up here with the heat, with the seat position buttons. It's a bit of a stretch to get up there, but they just the way they designed this, they don't have much more room. I thought it was kind of interesting. Mirror buttons there. I do have power adjustable pedals, which is something that Chevy's gone away with from their heavy duties. Um, I have some lights there, and I have fold down seats and pop the trunk. So I can I can fold down the seats and the kids and pop the trunk back over here. This is probably the only really disappointing thing in this is I have the smaller eight inch screen here, and when I put it in reverse, you'll see I do have a 360 degree camera. And I do have the backup camera, but it's just not as good as, you know, I'm sure that new F-150 is going to have a much better screen there. So it's something I'll probably um, invest in the future is the bigger screen like F-150. Probably go a long ways. Now, I do have cooled seats, though. That is cool. Heated steering wheel, and I have you know, a button. Uh, I do have the wireless charging. That's new for this year. Don't get that in the prior generations. I have the turn shifter, which I thought was interesting. I'm sure the placement would be over here. But everybody talks about how... Rams got in their trucks. Well, guess what? Ford does it as well. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, I did drive modes at four auto. I have a locking rear, rear axle. And it's interesting because this is independent front and rear suspension. Locking dip. So there you go. Here's my cup. Uh, we'll come over here. And we have the big center console with just nothing there, I don't think. I don't think there's USBs. Hey, Sean. Sean's around. That's cool. I usually miss Sean. I can't get this time zone right. Um, this tray moves back and forth. Oh, I do have a cigarette lighter hook up there. So I have I have a couple. I have like one USB there, and one old one new, one wireless charging. But that's all the USBs I can see. Yep. So no more USBs, which is kind of a bad thing. However, they took the cigarette lighter up here, which would have been nice to have a, the household adapter there. I don't. The inverter. I'm kind of interesting hit or miss there. Okay. So. Let's uh, let's talk about this exterior. Yes, vehicle is on. Um, oh, and we have the. Uh, is that a coin holder? You comment below. I think that's a coin holder right there. That's the best I can figure. I don't have a coin, but I think that's what that is. I can't figure out what else that'd be. It's a coin holder. And a little cubby that's kind of. I don't see much use for that. I don't understand that one. Anyways, oh the big uh, B and O stereo system. I have like twelve of these speakers. Yeah, I think it is a coin. Okay, so, uh, running boards, and I have big, hey, Russell, I have 22-inch,
are interesting. Does anybody have any comments on these seats? I don't know. I don't know if I'm a big fan of these seats. Lost sound again. Gosh darn it. Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. My phone is tethered to the speaker system. So every time I open and close the doors, the vehicle decides whether the phone is inside or outside. So, I'll work on that one. I'm not sure what to do. Um, yeah. All right. So, but, yeah. So, here, here's the deal. You can see it there. It's trying to call me. Let's say these systems suck. Like, stop trying to call me. Anyways, I have a, a little bit of clean up your interior here. Uh, no, it's got the 3.5 liter. I guess it, I guess you would – would you call that the 3.5? Would you call it the big one or the high output would be the big one? I would think the Raptor one, like the limited – they have a limited F-150, and I think they did it in the uh, Raptor. That would be that would be the big one, third row challenge. Um, let's see. I think there's plenty of room. Anyways, I uh, got some heater controls. Vents. Where'd vents be? Oh, vents are up here. So the vents up there and I probably have some floor vents. I could feel something. Something's done by my leg. And that's not a snake. All right. Yeah, I just I don't know. They're like Lincoln like seats. They're a little bit interesting. I'm not sure in these seats. So uh there's that back there. Alright, you guys want third row? Oh, I have a latch. So let me try this while getting out. Because if I because you know if I get out, you're gonna sound because it goes a truck again or the SUV or is this a truck or an SUV? People call these things trucks. Okay, so, um, pardon me. Let's see. Okay, so up over here. Oh, look at that. Wow, look at that come up. Oh, slide and recline. You guys, you're eating a sandwich. You just want to see me get stuck in the back. I don't, I don't know if I get stuck back here. It's got plenty of room. Okay. The problem is I'm just not very nimble. That's you. Wayne says that's you. So, see, the problem is I'm not a very flexible kind of guy. So, that's what having a belly does for you. Anyways, back here, you guys want to see the leg room? What is, oh, there we go. There's my sexy shorts. And, uh, yeah, there's, wow, sun glare. Leg room. Um, yeah, I guess I could. I, could, I, can, I guess I could kind of sit back here. It's not really... Ouch. Um, yeah. Not not really the very... Uh, very comfortable back here, I gotta say. Uh, not overly comfortable. What is that? Oh. 
I'm looking at this button. I'm trying to figure this button out. Yeah, let's look at this button. Okay. So it looks like that would... Oh. The seats recline. I want... Wait, wait a minute. All right, here. Oh. That's the reclining seat button. Let's try it. Oh. That's better. Not great better. So then I can... Whoa. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, these seats uh, raise and lower. Interesting. I don't know that they don't... Yeah. Hmm. That's a very interesting thing. All right, so let's go... Uh, so if, so here's what we'll do. Let's figure out... Let's play the game of how much this costs. You guys can tell me how much this costs. It's built in Kentucky. I got uh, limited... They do... Uh, King Ranch is new this year. They have platinum, so this is not the fully loaded one platinum. Tell me how much it costs. I'll tell you the price, and we'll go to my office. That way... Because when I walk out of here, that damn... SUV truck whatever that sync 3 system by the way is going to connect disconnect me so you guys lose audio again so 68,000 Sean says put your, put your thoughts in here I will I will move my way up closer 68 64 60 from one again MSRP price 70 from James 60 60, 70. So the new, so the changes, major product changes this year. Um, the safety stuff, the King Ranch. Why does this thing look so weird when I do it like that? It's like I get like an orange face. Uh, yeah. All right. 70 from Dwayne. You guys are actually pretty close. Let's go over it. So 2020 Expedition 3.5 liter heated and ventilated front seats, leather trim seats. Advanced security pack, uh, 17, 19, 22. Uh, this is iconic silver metallic, which is interesting color. I, I would prefer a different color, but okay. We have the packages. We have the FX4 package. We have the equipment group, a million. What do you win if you get the right price? I don't know. I haven't decided that. All right, so coming over here, we have base price, 66,470. Options are about 4,600. Total vehicle and options, 71,000. Total before discount seventy two thousand four fifty five with a three year warranty built in Kentucky shipped on rail if you want to know yeah seventy two four fifty five pretty decent crash ratings million mile warranty or still Detroit <laughs> it is built in Kentucky that's what I'm saying and from Ford Dearborn all right let's get rid of that stuff okay so here's what's gonna happen. Since I can tell the energy on this vehicle is not very high, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to open the hood. I'm going to see the dipstick is. And then we'll go inside the office. Plan? Plan? Good plan? Good plan. I think if I turn the truck off, it won't mute the sound. Um, oh, interesting. So I have, this is interesting. I have a couple of there that have a square. A couple. Of, this is like a trash bin. This is just going to be tons of trash. And then, oh, this is nice, though. I like this wood finish here. And then they have the typical door door handles from Ford, which I do like. It just, instead of grabbing a little thing, it's just nice and easy. Okay. Let's go like this. Did it reach 52,000? Wow. Too much. But, yeah, I had a, let's just say I had a good weekend, guys. It was a fun weekend. Okay, so climbing back in, um... 72,000, Russell. Turn that off. Sync 3 goes away. This is not a great system. Ju yeah, juice box holder. <laughs> Gene says 100,000. 72,000 was a number. And open that up. Okay. All right. Hey, Gene. Here we have the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. 10 speed. It is, it is a lot of plastic. It really is. I'm not sure it's worth the money. A little concerned about that. Okay, so who can spot the dipstick? Who can spot the dipstick? Who can... Sp Where the heck is it? Oh, no. No, look at that. What in the world? 
what so i'm i'm on the curb curb yeah curb so i i can't even reach it <laughs> i'm on a curb i can't reach it why would you even consider putting that all the way why that makes no sense like why has it got to be so low this is ridiculous and it's it's behind everything and it's low and look yeah and this has got issues not a fan at all that's gonna be my not like things because that's that's ridiculous that's so far away we do have some good sound happening in here all right we'll go to the office pour a little whiskey talk to you about trucks talk to you what's going on in the world what's going on in the world what are you pissed off of today that was kind of interesting. Oh, we did check the Let's see how these close. Well, they close pretty solid. Yeah. Pretty solid, and I got a key pop. Uh, let's see. I got uh, start. I got drop the thing. Yeah. All right. The Bronco looks nice. So, for those wondering, next, um, next Tuesday? Yeah, next Tuesday is behind the scenes. <laughs> Your sink sucks. Uh, behind the scenes of the Ford Bronco will be next Tuesday. So I'm doing the behind the scenes of the Ford. It'll be a long Zoom call kind of thing they have set up. So it'll give me all the information. And then I would think the reveal would happen a couple days after that. So I'm going to say July 10th, Bronco. That's what I'm thinking. I know uh, Monday there's going to be news on pickuptrucktalk.com. Bronco news. I just got the information today so you'll be able to see that next week so there's some bronco teachers for you and oh bunny oh bunny took off <sighs> missed it bunnies like my wife's guard <laughs> yeah oh should 12 on screen all right let's go to the office guys mm -hmm. all right and this is a nice office Lock the door for the kiddos. I will move you to the other screen. Yes, this is my fantastic office. The stuff. <laughs> this is the stuff you don't see. This is behind the scenes. This is editing computer and other computer. You've seen this one, but not that one. And yeah, this is all my work in there. So take care of this. Put you in my fantastic uh, selfie thing. There we go. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's go fire up the comments. See what you guys are talking about. Anybody watch my latest video on the um, steering electric uh, electric high output power steering? That was a pretty interesting video myself. And this is always the awkward thing. I have to find myself in YouTube to, be able to answer your questions on YouTube. And I have to see if I'm in the frame. Oh, I am live. Live now. Oh, there we are. So yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, I will try to look this way when I answer questions, but uh, what's going on? i got to grab my... Uh... I know, you need lots of computers, though. I mean, I have an old Mac, and that thing doesn't, like, do video that well. And, uh, yeah, that's what happens. So, is it... Do they say July 12th for Bronco? Must be. I know July 8th. No, it's not Tuesday. What am I thinking? It's a healthy pour. What am I thinking? It's not next Tuesday. When's the back background? Wednesday? Let's see. I know. I get my date. I can't believe it's July. Can you believe it's July? I mean, March was like four years long. It's the 8th. The 8th is the background, so the 12th. That's interesting. Yeah, so Wednesday. Sorry. Wednesday. Wednesday. Need longer arms. <laughs> Do I think Ford did enough with the F-150? I think it was weird. I'm not sure if I want to say they did enough. I want to say it was just what they did was different. And my bitch about the whole thing was I, so I had the behind the scenes like you guys had. Uh, no, let me say it differently. I had the behind the scenes. You didn't have that. Sorry. Um, but the behind the scenes was much like the reveal online where they started with who the customers were. They started with the, the tech. They started with all the different features and they never showed the truck until the very end. And the reveal that went online, uh, YouTube was like, I think I counted up, it was like 25 minutes 
25 minutes before they showed the truck. That's a long time. Like, and so when I did my video, I showed the truck within the first like minute. And I was like, I'm showing B-roll. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to show a little B-roll of the truck. You guys can actually see it before I get dive into everything else. Because I was like, that's just way too long. Show me the damn truck. I don't think they, I think what people wanted them to do, uh, they didn't. I think, you know, uh, new designs always get people interested, which I don't think they can do. I don't know if they can do much more with aluminum. I've heard from many different metal people that aluminum doesn't hold the bend when they do it. And so I don't think they could have done more with exterior styling. There's just some difficulties bending aluminum to do a lot of different styles to it. So I think they had to stay with the same style they had. I think the 11 grills is a bit much. <laughs> it's a lot of different grills and different, was it six different wheel options, 11 different grills? I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. I think the lights are better. I do like the lights. Um, I'm a big fan of the air dam. I'm really curious if it's gonna work in the winter time. And um, the seats, I mean, it's cool, but I think those seats would be so much better utilized on the Super Duty. Like I could see um, Super Duty customers. I could see campers, I could see Long haul people, I could see, um, what's, uh, hot shot. That's what I'm looking for. I can see hot shot guys buying that because hot shot guys tend to sleep in their truck to save money on motels because they're on the road so much. And that, if they don't get the motel room, that just goes to their profit. I could see hot shot drivers loving that reclining seat in Super Duty. I can see a lot of conversion sales from different brands because of that seat and the Super Duty. Uh, I just, I think that that screen, I'm really interested with that screen. Ford has been, difficult when it comes to technology. Their screens, their sync system, nothing has really worked quite right. The screen's too small, like in that expedition I just showed you. And so I'm really curious to see what happens with the, the screen. Like, is it good? And sync five, four? Sync four is the new one. I wanna see how that works because that's always been a difficult thing for them to get, seem like they nail it. They just seem like they, they drop the ball on that. I am curious to see what that hybrid system looks like and how it charges with the generator. Sorry, people keep saying like it's an inverter. No, no, no. It's a generator. It really is. And so they invert the power to generator. It, it all goes together. And I'm, I'm curious to see, I mean, they had these crazy stats, like 90 hours of, of, of run time for the generator to be able to power this stuff. And I just, I, I just don't think that's accurate. I just, I, it just, that's a lot. That's a big lot. And they're talking about running a cement mixer for like 80 hours. I don't know, man. That that seems like it's it's kind of on the edge of not real. And so I'm sure I'm missing something in the details. I'm sure I'll get an email and let me know what's going on. But I just, I want to try it. I want to take my saws all. I'm going to take my radio, take some different stuff, go out the farm, plug it in, and do that kind of stuff going on. So I, I just, I, I want to see where that stuff's going to go and how it's going to work. Um, I, the, the locking rear storage and the seats, that's that's fine. Um, the, the tailgate... It's interesting. I had a, the conversation, the, the video went today was with a guy from next year and him and I were talking about that, the uh, tape measure on the back tailgate and how people were going to measure two by fours on a circular saw on it. And him, him and I, the, both the same conclusion. Why in the world would you want to do that? <laughs> saw horses are cheap. And if your circular saw slips and you take away that rear tail lamp, you're like 800 bucks because they put cameras in those rear tail lamps. That thing's stupid expensive. And so I would never cut on tailgate in my truck. I know people that would. I, maybe on Swede I'd do it because Swede's all steel. But on a 70, 60, 70 thousand dollar half ton truck, I'm gonna get some sawhorses. I, I, I'm not gonna cut on that, that tailgate. I just it could be just me. But I'm not gonna cut on tailgate. Um, yeah, I think I think overall I think people were expecting powertrain differences. I think the hybrid is big news for them. They think it's a huge powertrain difference. I don't know that every truck customer sees it the same way, you know, because it's, it's, it's different to them, it's foreign. In SUVs, we've had hybrids for a long time, but in trucks, we haven't. And so I think it's, it's, it's a different idea. It's a foreign idea to truck guys. And I think that's gonna take some time to win over some truck buyers, because I just don't think that's what um, they're gonna automatically see. I don't think they're gonna see the value of that. So I think it's, it's gonna be kind of interesting to see the rollout on that, whether people go for it or not, I don't know. It's 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 a very interesting play. I think they should have done more 
but I don't think they could do more. I think they've run out of tricks in the bag for EcoBoost. Uh, 10 speeds kind of where it's at these days. And they the thing with Ford is, is they've improved the F-150 so much over the years. Each year they do something different to, to keep it competitive that they can't do like a, but it's all brand new because they continuously improved it. I think Ford fans can be like a little surprised by that when they start thinking about, oh, I thought it'd be so much different. We'd have all these different stuff, all these different powertrain stuff. Well, the thing is they've improved that truck so often that they don't have that big wow moment. So like when Toyota unveils the Tundra next year, it's going to be like, wow, because it's going to be so different versus Ford, which has continuously improved their product. Yeah, that took like five minutes. All right. Uh, Johnny's got the home time. Uh, I'm quiet. Heard the foot lap. Po- they have a movie closer. I'll try to be as loud as I can. Was 2021 Ford Expedition follow F-150? I think so. I think it's going to be. Yeah, I think they can do. I think that expedition is going to see a big change. I mean, you got Tahoe new, you have Yukon new, you have Suburban new. Uh, I think Ford wants to be more competitive in that segment. And without them building cars, I think they do something different. Because I think those large SUVs, like, you know, I got, I drove Torrington back, I got like 20 miles per gallon. And that's better. And if they can put the Power Stroke diesel in there, three liter diesel in there, and really expand their um, places, they're going to use that diesel, like, for, like, GM's doing the Silverado diesel and the GMC, I should say Silverado, so they, the three that are in line six that they're doing in the Silverado and Sierra, they're expanding that to Tahoe and Yukon. If you can just take and offer the engine to more places, then you really spread across your risk because now you're going to use it different places. And so I think that's where Ford can make some differences is in that. And I don't, I, I don't know if you guys know, and maybe I don't know, um, uh, I, I don't know if that is aluminum. I think I, I don't know if that... Oh, there it is. I can hear myself on the uh, thing. Sorry, Gene. Unpressed interior, Thomas Shes, hot shots, yeah. Because, like, backseat... I, Gene, I haven't had them in there. They've only been here for... It's only been here for a day. Dropped off yesterday. Uh, I'm going to take them... I'm thinking I'm going to take them to races Saturday night, and so I'll put them in the back, and we'll see if they like it. Yes, Juan. Romantic dinner on the beach with your girlfriend. Evening date. Uh, play more golf for flexibility. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I've been in the office a lot lately. There's been a lot of news going on. TRX is going to be amazing. I, have anybody seen a TRX de- uh, relief, revealing date? I need more whiskey. Anybody see like a time, a date from TRX? They said fall. That's all I've, all I've heard is fall. Uh, looks like Japanese movie not... Voice not matching sound. I'm sorry. Well, I'm delayed there, and maybe I'm delayed there. I don't know. Power boost. I can end this or another one. Do you guys want? If this is really becoming a problem, I can change another. I can change it to. I can end this one and do a different one. Let me know. If this is a problem. This is the best I got. I don't know. Late summer. I don't know how to transfer it from here to there. That's the problem. I don't want to do that. Need a Raptor version. <laughs> Raptor version of the expedition. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, we do have some uh, news from the sales front, if you guys are interested in that. I'm working on the video. I'm waiting for Ford to release their numbers. But so far, Silverado and Sierra truck sales were up, even during COVID. Everything else is down, 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 down. And I want to say Tundra. No. I don't know Toyota's numbers. I did see Silverado and Sierra sales. Sorry, I've been working on multiple videos today. Because I'm busy. I'm working for you. A lot of stuff going on. Um, thumbs up in our after version. I want to say... What else is going on? Oh, and I did that... Toyota was down too, but were the trucks down? That's a question. Um, and you guys saw the rain video yesterday. That went live. And... I get... Oh, I get the uh, Ram 2500 at the end of this, end of this month. 22nd, 20, 29th. I have a lot of stuff going on that week, so I'm hoping to do a lot of cool stuff with that. Um, yeah, live. Um, I have to... <laughs> um, what else is going... I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm lost of words. What else is going on tonight? It's just kind of one of those nights where I have a vehicle you guys aren't so interested in. And I'll be honest, I don't think the American consumer is very interested in, but I'm really curious about it, so I'm going to drive it quite a bit. And I have... Um, I'm trying to keep up. Uh, 
views are up like crazy. You guys have been blowing my content up, which is fantastic. Uh, stuff going like crazy. My day was really busy. I had the interview I put out. I had uh, working on the website quite a bit. My new uh, managing editor has been crazy busy over there, uh, working stuff out. We've been posting all over the place on different stuff and uh, different things going on. I want to say there was... Oh, I, I need to do a Ford Ranger video because they have some new packages. I think Ford's trying to not bring the Ranger Raptor to the United States. I think instead they are trying hard to um, give us trim packages and things. I'm working on website speed a lot. If you guys have some website speed tips and experts, let me know. Working on that. Um, oh, and Mazda seems like they killed the diesel, the CX-5 diesel. It looks like that's dead. And my my news writer is a big guy for Land Rover and Icon kind of stuff, so he's did some stuff in there. And the Bentley Bentega, Bentega has got new updates. I don't really care about Bentley. And, uh, oh, that ZR2 military ZR2. That's right. We did that, too. What do you guys think of that military ZR2? That thing was badass. Badass, really. Joe is late. Oh, my God, Joe is late. He's a half an hour late. That's all right, Joe. We don't have a whole lot going on tonight. Sorry, sadly, just what's going on. Um, Nissan Aria is going live soon. My friend David Boyd, Nissan Nation Productions, has talked about that nonstop. It's a electric crossover. Yippee. Mm. Engine bay was terrible. I don't understand that one. Um, yeah, CR2. Yeah. Yep. That's what we know. That's what, uh, yeah, all the reviews. The website looks great. I'm really happy with this website. Um, I think a lot of cool stuff's going on. I don't know. Um, people are looking, too. The website was like, like up 300 some percent year over year. And uh, yet another SUV. Yeah, no, it's, it's just kind of a weird thing. It's like dealers are probably like going, uh, Frontier, hello, Frontier. And they're like, here's an Aria. Weird. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, and Tesla is not the most valuable car company in the world. How is that even possible? That's so weird. No, oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, the website says we've got five-cylinder cylinder deactivation. Interesting point. I completely missed that. <laughs> Russell, I completely missed that. Uh, I didn't even notice that at all. And so the question is, if the Hemi has it, which it does, and GM has it, and Ford has it. Does it just become a staple, a feature, right? So I talked about this in my Trump uh, video I did on the fuel economy and about some standard engine features, and uh, I think some of the activation becomes a standard across the board. It just makes sense. However, the GM guys are really pissed off about it because they can say it consumes oil. So other brands are doing it. Apparently, the oil is not the big of a consumption issue for them, and so, yeah, it could be interesting. The Bronco, yeah, there's another Bronco Tees. Uh, yeah, 40 years, you call it. Come on. Nissan sales for the quarter are down 50%. Jesus, criminy. So, Nissan, I mean, you got Mitsubishi that may leave the United States. You have Infiniti that's basically dying. They're dead. They're going to become a Nissan Plus, which makes even more confusing sense than before. And Nissan's shrinking. I mean, if David is here to defend the brand, he'd defend the brand. But it's it's not looking good over there at all. At all. Yeah, there's a Bronco Tees on the website. Um, there's a Bronco Tees again, a mashup of old and new. There's a there's a story Carl ran, my news editor. And there's uh, some stuff on the website. Uh, don't tell him, David. Uh, yeah, don't. you piss him off. Uh, you have, what do you have? Yeah, I have something to tell you. What do you have to tell me there, Juan? What's going on? Um, yeah. All right, we'll get to Juan's question. I think that's going to wrap up the live stream, because like I said, I don't have a whole lot going on tonight. Sorry for the low energy. i just been busy all day. You know, doing it for you guys takes a lot of effort. It really does. And that interview I did with uh, Next Year was pretty darn interesting. I would like to see their stuff in action, like really have seen to drive it, kind of check it out in operation. But... Uh, this is the COVID world we live in. I had to do it here and go from there. Uh, golf game is interesting. So I say that because I'm playing tomorrow, but uh, I need to swing a little bit more. The gearing open is in two weekends. It's a stroke. It's a two-day uh, stroke play event.
percent. That's the way you say that. With the handicap figured in. Right now I'm trending the 6.6, .6, turning up to like a seven or eight. Just haven't hit my irons well. So I'm gonna playing. I'm playing in that, and so I'm excited to play in that. I enjoy the tournament every year. Matt Moran Motoring has a source that says there's a Ram SUV to battle the Bronco 2022. Um, that'd be interesting because I know that the Jeep Wagoneer is gonna come out. And that's gonna be the first time FCA is gonna have a big three row SUV in a long time. That's what's supposed to be. And I know I was talking to FCA reps, and they were like, where's our big one? So, like, where's our SUV? Keep your minds out of the gutter. Anyways, so I know the FCA is going to do that, right? So they're going to have a three-row SUV, and I know they've been talking about that because there's Tahoe, there's Yukon, there's Suburban, and then there's Expedition. Toyota's got their Sequoia. You have Nissan's got their Armada. FCA's got Nada. See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, you did. Anyways, there's nothing going on there. And so I know FCA is like, let's do something. They build big vehicles already. So I'm sure there's going to be something coming out. It's interesting. And there should be people with expedition. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a big one. It, they were talking about bringing back a Ram Charger. You guys remember Ram Charger when the Chevy K5 Blazer and the old Ford Bronco they had a Ram Charger. And so it could be interesting to bring that back. It could be. Doors and top. No. He went to the golf coach and he swings totally messed up. <laughs> that totally happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, it can't be the expedition. It can't be the size of the Bronco, which would be basically the size of a Forerunner and a what, Wrangler. And so it'd be a smaller two row SUV. I think Ram's going to do it. Ram is like, they're like taking names and kicking butt. I mean, they are coming after Ford like crazy. And uh, Ford, if they don't get some new products out and keep the, the product line going, they're in trouble. I mean, there's. I was listening to some CNBC stuff, and they were interviewing Joe Hendricks. No. Joe Hendricks? No, that's not right. They were talking to one of the guys at Ford, and he was talking about the COO, not the CEO. Uh, the COO, and he was like, yeah, the big year. They got F-150 and Bronco. Explorer's trying to get back on track after a, just a terrible launch. And so if they don't make good on F-150 and Bronco, Ford's really in trouble. Really in trouble. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Ford. I, I know they have a lot of money sitting in reserve, and they're sitting on that money waiting, hoping that COVID goes away and they can sell a bunch more trucks. But they got nothing else going on. I mean, and I just saw that Lincoln killed a couple things, and the cars are getting more killed. So a lot of stuff going on. You said an 86 week ago, and yesterday I shot an 85. <laughs> it always gets better. All right, hey. Uh, Timbo, have you recently tested out the new Ford... Explore ST. I have not. I have not. I should go to my Ford dealer and, and get one. My Ford dealer in town has him and I are pretty close. And uh, I have never seen one in the fleet uh, as far as press vehicles. So, like, I get the press vehicles I get are seven day long from the manufacturer. I can do a lot of stuff with them. Uh, the stuff I get from the dealer, I get for like an hour. So, it's not as much fun as it would be to get from the um, manufacturer. So, I do wonder. Uh, Dodge is teasing something big for tomorrow at 12. They're, they're talking about, um, I think it's a car, Juan. I think that's a car. So let's see. Um, Ford dealer near me. It's, um, oh, I never remember. Fremont. Fremont Ford. Let's see if Fremont Ford had one. Let's see. We're going to go look at new, new, for, uh, yes, COVID update. I think get that. Okay. New search inventory. Uh, Ford, looking at uh, year, make, model, make, body style, cylinder, get, displacement, features. What can I sort by type? Oh, I guess I can't. So they got an X Ranger, F-150, F-150, Super Duty, Lincoln Aviator, F-150, Super Duty, Super Duty, Super Duty. Um, let's, let's go Ford Explorer. Oh, that's trade. Search inventory. Explorer. They have uh, Explorer Platinum four wheel drive coming in at $58,000. They have a Ford Explorer XLT. They have a Ford Explorer ST four wheel drive. Ooh. ST four wheel drive. They have uh, uh, one Platinum. No, they have two. They have a ST 
They have two. They have a blue, a white one, and a white one and a blue one. Blue or black? It's black. White one and black one. So there you go. They do have two. So, um, hmm. Interesting. Volume? All right. I'm trying to get volume. I know it's, I'm away from the camera. So I have a weird setup tonight. Sorry, Brian. Um, yeah. So I could go get that. If you guys want to see that ST, I could go call my guy up and go do that. You're just going to buy a horse. <laughs> Brian's, Brian's, Wore my hat in Lake Tahoe. Lake, Lake Tahoe, I think it was. Uh, make it so, number one. So, uh, ST is the... Explore ST. Is there many videos on ST? Oh, I'm getting hot. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, so there's... Uh, I could do the Explore ST, and then I could do... They have an F450 I want to try out, too. But um, I think maybe Friday I'd have a chance to do that. Yeah, tomorrow I'm really busy. Playing golf all day. Titan. Oh, jeez. So I asked about Titan. Yet again, I asked about Titan. And uh, I was told that... I was told nothing. Like, crickets. Like, just crickets. Yeah, that's a 450 with the... Um, it's it's a flat bed on it. I think I'll show you the inventory in this. Um, it's got the rancher bed, what we call them. I've driven by it a couple times. And I want to, I definitely want to try it out. 450. No, it doesn't come up in inventory, but they had it. I promise you it's been there. So I'm going to do that. Oh man, White Explorer ST. The white one? Okay, so white one. Okay, I will, uh, Rick, I will reach out to him tomorrow and I will, uh, I will see what he says about it. But I usually have no problem. I usually just roll up there and I toss me the keys and I do a little video and I, yeah. Red, white, red. We're doing OJ White, buddy. OJ White. So Obi's knows that the, the uh, Bronco. Poor guy looking at Rand a lot now. <laughs> Thomas Darwin. I don't blame you. The, the, I, so I, I, meet, I had this guy. He was messaging me on Facebook. One no about 2021 Ford F, on the 150. And it was like Tuesday, and the video was supposed to go out like Thursday. Because I did a live stream, and he heard the live stream. And he wanted to know more about it. So I was like, dude, I can't tell you anything. I'm not going to sacrifice my relationship with Ford and tell you details for an hour ahead of time. And he watches it. He watches my video, watches the reveal, hits me up immediately after. He goes, all right, Ram, we're up for 50. I'm like, damn, Johnny on the spot. I have to say what I'm like. And I will tell you that if you're doing a lot of work and you need the generator or if you're traveling a lot, that Ford's great. But if you want to go play and have a good and, and have the technology and entertainment screens like that, Ram is such a good truck these days. And ride quality is so good. I know you guys don't always care about ride quality, but ride quality is really good. And I got to tell you what, I was a big fan. I'm still a big fan of the Ram trucks. I just am. And if their quality, if their quality can go up, and according to those JD Power people that everybody wants to make arguments about whether they're a marketing company or not, which, whatever, um, if their quality can go up, Ram is the truck to buy these days. It is just amazing. But quality has always been a concern. Always been a concern for me. Um, I signed up for Ram B6, then they got stupid. Silverado 2.7, but they want too much. They didn't think of flying to Phoenix for the 2020 Titan, then they got stupid. <laughs> Everyone got stupid, Brian. <laughs> Please don't tell me about the quality of it anymore. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with the uh, the quality. The quality is always a big concern with me of trucks. I tell you, buy the best deal you can, and a lot of times you do. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to see what's happening with that. Everything's in sync. Uh, Tacoma's going in on Monday. What's wrong with Tacoma? So I, just, uh, and here's the other question, Brian. Can you sit in the Tacoma comfortably? That's like the million dollar question. That's the question. Uh, trim and battery again. Ew. That sucks. Well, at least not an engine. That'd be the benefit. You, yeah, you can't fit in the damn thing. I did my video, I got a bunch of crap about it, and I'm telling you, that truck needs to be redesigned. They like that sleek look to it, and nobody can fit the damn things. So yeah, you're 6'5", right? Yeah, I'm 5'7", 8 with boots on, and uh, I have a hard time fitting in that truck too. Really hard time. All right, let me talk about that, talk about that. I'm going to wrap it up, guys. I'm going to have to go some dinner. I haven't had dinner yet, and it's 6.45. 
uh, sacrifices to make for you guys. I was out doing the mob per gallon test on the expedition, which apparently nobody's going to watch. <laughs> sometimes, I'll tell you this. Sometimes in this job, I get in vehicles alone, and I drive it around, and in my head as I'm driving around, I'm thinking, there is none of you guys going to watch this video. <laughs> so, so I'm driving this around going, huh. I don't know if anybody's going to watch this video. I just don't think... It's just not a big seller for Ford, and it's not a big cross-shopper for Tahoe and Yukon. My neighbors have a Yukon XL. My neighbor across the street just bought a brand new... Uh, uh, 18. New to them. Yukon. I'm thinking, ain't nobody going to watch this stuff. <laughs> nobody's going to watch it. You guys are saying you watch it. Maybe like five people watching this video, and I'm just like... Mm -hmm. You know, but I can go borrow the S... I'll borrow the Explorer ST from the dealer, and I'm sure... There'll be like 900 people watching that in the first 10 minutes, right? It's just, some vehicles are just dogs, some vehicles aren't. I mean, just, it's just, you know, <laughs> Rob says the same. I'm telling you, it's like, it's like, that's what happens. It's not their fault or not my fault. I'm doing, I do everything I can, right? So I, the same video, I put together my same sequence. I'll tell you my five good things, five bad things. It'll be a cool thumbnail. I'll be honest with my thumbs up, thumbs down. I do all the same stuff and that video just doesn't take off. I was listening to, um, uh, uh, oh, that, uh, the, there's a driving podcast, whatever. They're interviewing Doug Demiro. Doug's the big, you know, kind of thing. And uh, I was watching, I was listening to Doug Demiro about this. And he's like, yeah, he goes, they're talking about uh, Aston Martins. I'm talking about Aston Martins. And Doug's like, I can't get anybody to watch Aston Martin videos. Like, everybody watches everything else. Aston Martin, they won't, they won't watch Aston Martins. And he's like, there's certain vehicles on my channel that people just don't watch. And I'm thinking, you know what? I have the same damn problem. I want them on the channel. I want to do videos on these vehicles I'm on the channel because if you guys happen to be searching for it, I want you to find my content. I want that to happen. But there are certain vehicles that you just, it's not my fault. It's its not my fault. It's what happens. Uh, I was When COVID happened, my revenue just went, took a, took a dive. And the wife and I, I was kind of getting pissed off about it because I really, I've come to count on the revenue from, uh, from, you know, from YouTube. And I said, you know, this is not my fault. COVID is not my fault. This virus, and it's a nasty virus. It is a nasty virus, but it's not my fault. And then revenue dropped. And I just had to take it that way. I'd say, you know, it's not my fault. That's just what it's going to be. All right. Because of the craziness, the expedition sales will explode just like the camper sales. Do you think, Bob? I see more people, like, camping. I see more people getting off the grid a little bit. I think states like Nebraska, uh, Montana, Idaho will have influx of people living there because work from home is becoming more of a standard and why the hell would you want to live like downtown chicago work from home when you can buy a place in montana along the river stream for a third the price that's just me i i you know i'm telling you that's what i'm doing so yeah it's interesting you'll subscribe for you go <laughs> is not tinfoil he's on the closet <laughs> Rob, I gotta read something out loud. Rob Bird says JD Powers voted COVID 19 tops initial quarantines for 2020. <laughs> that, that's the common tonight. That is common. Uh, G said, oh, I heard the RA is gonna be a big deal. You can almost call it RA Grand. <laughs> Even in normal parts of California are camping. I, I, I would say that, I mean, if this COVID thing has taught me anything, it's like, the, the, the thing for me is like, why would you live in the city when I mean, you live in a country like me and COVID doesn't exist out here, basically? I mean, it just doesn't. It's not the big deal. So that's the thing. Oh yeah, Rob, that, this is for you, buddy. That was really good. That was, that was an exceptional comment. Okay, I'm gonna go eat. That's been 50 minutes. I am, um, uh, tell me why I don't like most people. I, I agree too. I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to go eat. Have a good week, guys. Um, again, more stuff coming out. It's cool stuff coming. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, I'll get that Explore ST. I'll, I'll get that done for um, my friend there, and I will get that all done so you guys you guys have a good time. So I'm going to say ta-ta for now. i got to grab the phone here in a minute and flip this around. So it may be awkward for a minute, but just hold with me. I'm going to grab the phone. And then see, this is what I see. You guys see that. So I'm going to go... All right, later, guys.